what's up y'all welcome back to my channel so today i am doing a full set and this full set is going to be um it's going to be a mix of coffin and stiletto so right now i'm just applying the tips and you want to make sure that your tips are not too small or not too big so i'm just using the glue and i'm just going in and putting that tip on and i will be doing that for the rest of the fingers So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to show every single finger or I'm not going to do both hands on camera. I cut out um, doing both hands and just, just showing one just because I wanted to focus more on the end of the video, which is when I apply all of my rhinestones. So that part is a little bit tedious and it's long, so I didn't want this video to be an hour long by me showing both hands. So. You'll see. So after I apply the tips, I'm going in with my tip cutter and I'm just cutting them down to the desired length that the client wants. And um, this tip cutter was a gift and I'm not sure what brand, I don't think it is a brand. But um, now I'm just measuring the fingers up against each other just to make sure that they're all even on both hands. And then I'm going to go in with my nail clipper, my nail, yes, my nail clipper, <laughs> my straight edge nail clipper. And I'm just cutting off the sides of the nail. So when I go into file, I don't have to file any excess nail or any unnecessary nail. Kind of eliminate some of that filing process. So I'm going in with my 80-100 nail file and I'm using the 80 grit side which is the more coarse side and um, for her pinky and her index finger she wanted them to be stiletto so I'm just alternating filing on either on each side of the nail just to make sure that it's even so I'm just coming in and I'm bringing that file to an angle so I can get that point just right and you want to alternate on both sides just because you don't want to file too much on one side where it'll make the nail crooked so if you file too much on the right side it'll make your nail crooked so you want to just keep on alternating so for the rest of the fingers i'm just doing a coffin shape so again just filing on the sides i'm making sure i'm alternating between each side and i'm bringing that nail file in at an angle so it can be that shape that i want So after I shape the nails how I want, I'm just going in with the nail file and I'm using the 100 side this time and I'm just blending in the smile line. So that's basically just the nail tip where it started 
and into that little curve. I'm just blend it into the natural nail. So when I do it, go in to apply my acrylic, it's a little bit more smooth of an application for me. And it'll also look more natural. So now I'm going in with my nail dehydrator. This is by Mia Secret. And I'm just going in on the natural nail and applying that dehydrator on each of her fingers on the natural nail. And then I'm going to go in with the Mia Secret primer and do the same exact thing. So it's not recommended that you use both you can use just the primer I like to go in with the dehydrator just because um, just to make sure that I get all that um, not the natural oils off of the nail just to dry it up but you can just use the primer and that'll be fine so now I'm just going in and I'm using the Mia secret pink acrylic and the Mia Secret Monomer. I'm also using the Alpha Brush in the number nine, and it is a Kalinsky um, in the shape of an oval. So, not to really get too deep into how I place my beads because I really don't have a specific technique. Um, I always usually just start with the first bead being in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet, and then I just work my way from there. Um, a lot of people have one ball methods that they use. They like to use a four ball method. Um, I really don't have a specific method. I just kind of pick up, I pick up smaller beads just because it's easier for me to, to work with. And it saves me a lot of filing at the end. So I just do it as I go. I don't do four. I don't stick with, you know, doing five or I, I don't really just don't count. I just add as I go. So I'm actually going to count how many beads I use. So that was my first one. Like I said, I put it right in the middle. This is going to be my second one. And I placed that one right a little bit above the one that I put down in the middle. Um, let's see. My third one is going to be right below that one. And then I'm just brushing that up towards the tip. Pretty sure I'm going to pick up another one and put it closer to the cuticle. So yeah, bam. Put that one closer to the cuticle and I push that down just so I can go ahead and fill that cuticle part in but not putting it on the actual cuticle that is very important and that might be is that it no <laughs> so it looks like I added one more and I'm basically trying to get that apex to be strong and um, have my stress area not be thin I want to have a little hump there so I'm probably just doing that to make it making my apex strong okay so this one one bead put that in the middle brush it down towards the tip and I'm wiping off the sides of the nail because sometimes the acrylic does tend to run to the side so you want to make sure just to make it easier when you go back to reshape that it's not too much filing because you will lose your shape when you apply your acrylic so this is my second bead. Y'all lost count already. My second bead, and it looks like I placed that one below. So see, I don't have a specific method. I just kind of added how I go one day or maybe, you know, later down the line, 
I have it to where I do the same thing every time. But I really literally just make sure that I am going over the nail with the acrylic and all is even. And I have a nice dress area, apex area, whatever you want to call it. But like I said, I do not have a specific way as I, um, I don't have a specific way of laying down my acrylic. So once you place that bead of acrylic closer to the cuticle, you do want to wipe around the cuticle using the tip of your brush to make sure that there isn't any product on the cuticle area or on the skin just to eliminate any lifting. So if you have any acrylic on the skin, it will cause moisture to get underneath the, to underneath the nail, which will eventually cause that nail to lift. So it's really important just to kind of go around that, even if you don't see it. It, it's probably still there so just go around that cuticle with the tip of your brush and wipe around just to get any excess acrylic away from that or off of that skin. All right, so I know y'all are probably like, well, what happened to her drilling a nail? What happened to her buffing them out? So I think I got a phone call or something to where I had to pick it up and stop recording. So I did go in with the e-file after I laid my acrylic down to smooth over the nail and also seal that cuticle. Um, and then I went over with a buffing block to make sure to get rid of any imperfections that the e-file would have left so um unfortunately i wasn't able to capture that uh, i think somebody called me of course they wanted to call me while i was recording but um now i'm just going in with this dnd &D gel polish in the color french vanilla and um applying one thin layer and then i'm gonna cure that for 60 seconds do the other hand apply a second coat and then i'm gonna come in with some bling And for this middle finger, um, I don't have like a super dense glitter 
um, polish. So I'm just going in with this sparkly glitter polish by Dandy. I forgot the name of it. But this is going to be the nail that has a full nail of bling. And like I said, I don't really have a dense glitter. So that's what I came up with. So now I'll just be applying the second coat of the D&D &D in the color French Vanilla on all the fingers except for the one in the middle. I'm not going to do two coats of the glitter polish because I'm just putting bling on top of that one. And I do go in with my cleanup brush just to get any polish that I may have gotten on her skin. And I just dip that in some acetone. I damp it on the paper towel and then I go around the part of her skin where the polish may have gotten on. Bling time. So I am using the Mia Secret Gel Resin to apply the rhinestone. So this one is like a teardrop sort of looking shape. And I'm just putting that on the part where I put the gel resin. And I'm using a wax pencil. I did get this from Amazon. I'll be sure to leave all the items in the description, all the links to the items in the description that I use in the video. And then I'm grabbing a, I believe that's an SS6, and I'm putting that at the back of the nail underneath that raindrop, <laughs> raindrop um, rhinestone. So for this one, I think I'm just doing like a half nail type of thing where it's just coming, kind of coming up halfway up the nail or all the way to the top, but I'm not feeling the nail all the way up. So there I'm just using the gel resin activator spray which is just used to freeze that gel resin into place and um, that is pretty necessary when you're using the gel resin because the gel resin is a little bit thicker than glue and that spray, I don't know what type of science it is but it does freeze that glue right into place. So for the all bling nail, I'm just using big rhinestones, medium rhinestones, small rhinestones, and I'm just alternating between the sizes so it can fit. Um, you don't want, I mean, you can use more than one or one size only, but I find it a little bit easier to make all of them fit a little bit better if you alternate between the sizes.
So again, I'm just using different size rhinestones to fill in the spaces. I'm applying the glue as I go. Um, it does tend to dry on you sometimes if you're moving a little bit too slow. So as you can see, I'm just going in, applying the rhinestones to the empty spaces using small ones, medium ones, big ones, <laughs> and then I'm applying the glue as I gradually get down to the bottom of the nail. So for this nail, I'm going to just be going along the V shape of the nail or the stiletto shape of the nail. So I'm just putting rhinestones on the outside. So it's going to just be outlining that point. I like to spray the gel resin activator as I go sometimes just because if it isn't 100% dry by the time I'm moving on to the next set of rhinestones or whatever the case may be, I don't want anything to move. So I kind of just spray that so I can make sure that everything stays in place while I apply the other side or however it is and I'm applying the rhinestones. Okay, so I did do the same exact thing on the other hand. So now I'm just coming in with my Gelixir gel top coat. Um, again, this top, this top coat is really thin in consistency. Um, I still have not gotten any recommendations from you guys <laughs> on a top coat that is a little bit more thick. To where I don't have to go in with my cleanup brush to get around the skin because it has ran over on the side of the skin. But... I'm just going in and I'm going around the diamonds or the rhinestones. You don't want to get the top coat on the rhinestones because it'll just dull them out and it'll make it look really weird. So you just want to make sure that you're being careful when you're applying your gel top coat when you have your rhinestones already in place. So I'm just going around, I'm going in between, but I'm not going on top of the rhinestones. So you want to cure that for 60 seconds and then move on to the next hand um so she actually decided that she wanted to add some rhinestones i guess the thumb was too plain for her she wanted all her nails to be blinged out so we went ahead or i went ahead and just applied two rows of rhinestones at the tip of the thumb
All right, so we're all done with that. Go ahead and put that in the light for 60 seconds. And I am finally done, you guys. This came out bomb. My um, clients, they're taking full advantage of this special that I have going on where they can have a full blinged out set for a low price. And this came out super blinged out. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys next time.